Well, again, good afternoon. My name is Tom Bunn. Welcome to AgriFood Conversations, brought to you by iSelect, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. I'm an associate with the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our conversation and discussion today. As you know, AgriFood Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is ag finance. On today's call, we are joined by Carter Malloy, the CEO of AcreTrader. AcreTrader is a real estate investing platform that makes it easy to buy shares of farmland and earn passive income. Through a proprietary online investment platform, AcreTrader aims to provide transparency, security, and liquidity to people wanting to invest in farmland. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Acre Traders market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Acre, Tra Acre Trader may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a moment to answer. While the poll is running a couple process comments, we are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Acre Trader find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Please feel free to type in questions as the presentation is rolling and that will make for the dedicated Q&A section a little bit more efficient. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Carter Malloy, CEO of AcreTrader. Take it away, Carter. Thanks, Tom. As, as Tom mentioned, I'm the, the founder and CEO here at AcreTrader. For some quick background, AcreTrader is a technology company democratizing the large and, and profitable land transaction market. We are a post series A business. We have about 35 employees and, and growing very quickly there. We have disclaimers too. So first to sort of establish some, some ground base and understanding around farmland as an asset class, it's pretty exceptional. And especially when you stack it up next to other far more commonly owned asset classes, it really stands out as, as great potential portfolio diversification tool it can offer its investors great yields and low volatility, great equity uh, and, and conservatism as well. So that, that's something that we're really excited about the asset class is, is how it has performed over time. And, and perhaps the, one of the easiest ways to describe that is by showing you what is on the y-axis here is the average annual growth rate. So how, how much return that asset has generated for its investors over this nearly 30 year period here. And on the, on the, sorry, the, uh, the Y axis, on the, on the X axis, left and right is, is volatility, which means how much does the price of that asset swing over time? And, and so what you, obviously if you're the bottom right there, you're not returning much and the price is swinging around a ton. If you're on the bottom left or top left, that's really where you wanna see assets. And, and what's fascinating about farmland is, yeah, sure, it's absolutely not a get rich quick scheme. This is not, uh, a crazy high performer. We're not sort of hope to be the antithesis of things like GameStop and uh, Bitcoin. The, the idea is very simple in that we, we all as investors, at least for portions of our portfolio, should, should and often do seek uh, compounding of capital, gr growth of capital over time, and, and conservative investments with an attractive risk re reward relationship. And, and that's, that's, again, why we're very excited about farmland as an asset class. Now, the, the problem with the asset class and why most people uh, outside of probably this call today haven't heard much about it is because it's really inefficient and really opaque. Everything is highly manual. And, and look, we're not just going to drop in AI and technology and fix that. Certainly, uh, though, the, the industry could use a lot of work. And so on, on the left here, for, for buyers, it's a highly local market. There's no real data. And it's very slow times to transact. In the middle are, are the brokers. There are some great, great brokers out there. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's very different than commercial or, or residential in that there are far fewer brokers and, and much more limited competition and, and really all kinds of different commission structures and outcomes 
for the buyers and sellers and, and often not highly consistent outcomes, which you would come to expect if you were selling your home or selling a commercial building. And on the right here are, are the buyers. There's no comparable data out there really uh, of, of much use anyway. Uh, it's very private, very offline. So again, it's just an opaque industry as a whole. Our solution to that problem is our, our technology. So, so first really is, is platform. And behind the technology is certainly people and, and, and lots of hard work and operations as well. But we, we do automate sourcing and valuation to the extent that we can, although it's still a very manual process, while also focusing on conducting the transaction efficiently and seamlessly for all the stakeholders involved. Acre Trader started as a land investment company, primarily for retail investors. So on the right-hand side here, you see fractional investors. That, that's investors on our, on our platform, very simple to use. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the coming slide. Average portfolios there are, are certainly in the tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, so, so it is called retail plus in terms of the, the types of investors. But, but that, that, while that has been our focus, the demand out there is so big, it doesn't make sense for that retail securitization to be the only vehicle uh, to access farmland investments. We get near daily requests to buy and sell large properties. And, and thus we've expanded our footprint really to, to modernize brokerage. Basically, we are a new way that people invest in farmland and that's working well, but we want to become the way that people invest in farmland. At, at the core of that retail fractionalization that I spoke to a moment ago, this is what most people see on our website and, and the, the very basics of how it works. We identify a property that is placed in an LLC and then that goes into our platform. And for the investors, it's very simple. You create a login in a matter of minutes, you can invest in farmland on our platform. So it's a purely electronic transaction. And after that, the investor is a passive investment. That's what's really important. If you wanted to invest in farmland historically, you go out, you put down a million dollars, and then you get to manage a farm. Not a starting, not a place that the extreme majority of people can, can participate. So that's what we aim to, to provide is a seamless and passive investment experience. For some examples of what that looks like to the investor, this is a traditional row crop. You, you traditionally make monies two ways. You can make money from rental income, that's where the farmer pays rent, and you can make money from appreciation in the value of that land over time. As a general statement, row crops often show less cash income than other farm types, uh, but typically they have shown more appreciation over time as the supply and demand functions play out here. And supply and demand is very simple to understand. We have so much farmland and it's shrinking and we have more and more mouths to feed. Food, fuel, and fiber the demands for that continue to grow. This, uh, and again, the, the card we're looking at here is an example of one of those row crop offerings. And you can see a lot of these on our website. We've, we've done well over 50 deals like, like this and like the following deal. And you can, you can dig into these on the website. So the, the other type, we've talked about row crops. Now this is permanent crops. So whereas a row crop is something you, you plant every year, harvest every year, permanent crops are things that last longer. So these are typically commodities grown on vines and most commonly on trees. They, they often have larger cash returns, but there is more variability in those returns year to year because you are directly or often directly exposed to the commodity. Uh, that's the return volatility is also because you're frequently investing directly in operations as well as the land and the trees themselves. Ultimately, the, the cash returns tend to be higher. The appreciation factor tends to be a little bit lower. The end to end IRRs or investment returns for the investors uh, have, have tended to be fairly similar over time in the 11% range, give or take. A reminder that is unlevered, such without putting much of debt on it to juice your returns. And as a result, the, the, re, the returns the variability in returns over time have, have shown to be less than most other major asset classes. But again, these, these types of offerings are often more involved. And, and so not only does one need to understand the land, but in this type of offering, also really understanding the, the operator, the, the sponsor of that deal, the commodity involved in that deal, and, and very, very importantly, the water involved in that deal. And, and this is where there are a lot of pitfalls. There's a lot of, uh, Excel farming that goes on where a farm and an idea looks really great on paper and or in Microsoft Excel, but that does not necessarily translate to great returns on the ground. So it's really, really important to have deep diligence and, and uh, 
the folks as, as we do on our team dedicated to uh, the complexity here and, and understanding all these variables that may ultimately drive the investor's outcome. For, for us, it's, it's fairly simple. What we're after, there's 50 billion, upwards of 100 billion of, of farmland transactions already occurring annually. Put simply, that is our target as a company. We make those transactions occur much faster. We do so in a much more efficient manner with, with technology and we do that in a highly scalable manner. Uh, it's a highly scalable way. Uh, our, our data advantage is also a big deal. There is no MLS. So the thing that tells all the various listing sites like Zillow what a home is all about, that does not exist in our world. So there is a huge amount of information asymmetry that can be a disadvantage or an advantage. This is a, a, a fast growing effort within our company. We've got dedicated geospatial analysts and data scientists on our team uh, that, that are actively and continuously adding to these data sets for us. Why? One, we want to do a better job always of, of understanding the assets and understanding farming and farmland itself. Two, we want to give this stuff away. We, we want to help build education among the market. So using uh, parts of that data, we have built and are building more and more discovery tools and information tools or, or educational tools to put on our website. Again, one is because we just want the world to be more educated about farmland, become more involved in farmland. It's a great thing for farming communities to have outside capital coming in and supporting uh, these farmers and, and often their, their growing efforts. In addition, the goal for us is also very simple in that we want people with the intention of transacting in farmland to find us first. Uh, we are becoming the place for conversations around buying and selling, and that helps drive our valuable supply of land. This is really important. And I've mentioned we, we ingest a multitude of internal and external data. We have very high throughput. I think most folks see our website front end as what we have built. And it's great. It's a really great seamless process. But this is what makes us different. This is really, really important. We've built this exceptional land sourcing engine. We're not just out taking flyers from brokers and, and saying, hey, this is good. This is not good. We are digging really deep. We're looking off market. We, as a a data point in the first quarter of, of this year, our, our farm team spoke to over, had over a thousand phone calls with farmers and landowners to, to really dig in here and source exceptional land for our investors. And, and we've also built a few ways to monetize that. So there, there's a very narrow slice of, of land that, that uh, fits the parameters to, to be listed on our website. Should that not fit our parameters for a multitude of reasons, not necessarily because of quality, but should it not fit our parameters, uh, then we have other ways to monetize that, that deal flow. And uh, that often comes in the form of a, a whole parcel sale. So what this is showing you is, is a, a flow of when a, a, a new parcel or new farm comes into our pipeline, how that's treated, how it's worked on. And then ultimately, we and or uh, are with our farming partner can make a decision to go syndicate that on our platform where, where that's what we discussed earlier. It goes into an LLC. The investors come on and invest, or we can help that seller achieve a, a whole parcel sale through a more traditional brokerage activity and, and go find a great outcome for the seller and the buyer of that farmland. And again, it is incredibly important that we are transparent throughout this process. We provide all this data that we have, all of the insights that we have openly uh, to those sellers and those buyers both. It's, it's really important to note this in our market because it does not happen as nearly as often as it should. And, and lastly, for our team, we've got a, a senior, successful senior team here with deep ag, financial, and technical expertise. And, and we have a great board of directors, board of advisors, early backers within our company. Uh, that includes the chairman of the London Stock Exchange, the former CFO of Amazon, the former manager of the, the largest ag fund out there, the head of the world's largest ag research laboratory. We are surrounded, we are lucky to be surrounded by great people not only through, through advisory capacities and, and board capacities and investor capacity within our business, but also inside of our company. Hiring is, is arguably the most important thing that we do. We are extremely focused on getting that right and having wonderful teammates here internally to help support the rapid growth that we're experiencing and ultimately to create better outcomes for buyers and sellers of, of farmland. So that is the uh, brief overview of our business. Happy to open it up here for Q&A and, and discuss further. Awesome, Carter, thanks so much for walking us. To those in attendance, as a reminder, 
you can ask a question by using the Q&A box found in the middle of your screen, or you can raise your hand, I believe on the right side of your screen, and I'll unmute you and you can ask Carter a question directly. That's actually probably the easiest, but feel free to, to do what you Carter, I guess to kick things off, I have a couple. So you mentioned there's no MLS or established MLS. I guess, can you talk a little bit about competitive pressures you might be seeing either from startups within ag or, you know, companies like Zillow trying to make a lateral move into this space? Do you, do you see any of that? Do you see Zillow as playing in this sandbox down the, down the road? We, we don't see much or any competitive pressure today. We, we do have some competitors and that, that's great. Like the, the market is so huge that we're dealing with. We're talking about $3 trillion of agriculture. We view it as the, the more information, the more participation, the better. It's certainly an, an endorsement of the market and, and we, we welcome that. We, we certainly want people to positive competitors and be contributory to, to, to the overall ecosystem. But we're very excited about the, the expansion and the presence of, of new tools, new financial tools, new data sources, new analytics that are, that are occurring within our industry. Great, thanks. Question from Dan D. Dan asks, please discuss liquidity for the individual investor. So currently the way this works for an individual investor, we, we most of our offerings are conducted under exemption 506C of regulation D. Sounds like a whole bunch, but basically these are, what they look a lot like a private, but it is still a private security. And, and there are certainly liquidity constraints. One of those is that there is a mandatory lockup period of one year. So if you're investing on our website, uh, no matter what, expect to hold that investment for one year. We ask everyone to expect to hold that investment for the full investment period, which is usually five to 10 years. Sometimes that may be 10 plus years, even up to 15 years. But we do ask that investors are long-term in their thinking and their approach and that they, they expect to hold the investment through the life of the investment, through, through the life of the, the vehicle. That being said, we are also working on a secondary market that would allow investors to come on and seek liquidity should they need that liquidity. So uh, year three comes along and, and for reason uh, A, B, or C that investor needs to sell, we, we do want to help them and provide a venue for that to occur. So uh, to, to note, after that one-year lockup, you are certainly free to sell directly to friends or family through other online platforms. We're happy to help facilitate those transactions. We, we don't want to force people's hands but by any means, but, but we do aim to, in, in the near future, have, have a venue where those investors could seek liquidity across our platform, where there are, are tens of thousands of active registered users on the platform. Great. Carter, can you talk a little bit about sourcing? It seems like in this marketplace, it, it would be, the supply side would be hard given the, the nature of farmers and growers and the fact that they're you know, generally working the field and not on their computers all day, the disparate geographical locations. Talk to me a little bit about the supply constraints and finding the supply, and then ultimately how you convince farmers to, to, to join your platform. What, what are the key incentives that are really driving farmers to um, use you over another platform or a more traditional route? So I'll, I'll first discuss the difficulties of supply, and then I'll discuss our, our farming partnerships. It, it is easy to find farmland to buy. Very, very easy. There's lots of this stuff out there. It is also pretty easy to convince yourself that it is a good purchase to be made, or it's a good investment, and, and even present that information to others. And, and uh, you know, th there, there's farmland about, you know, 50 to $100 billion of the stuff that trades hands every year in the United States. So it is easy to find farmland. It is really, really hard to find great farmland that, that fits our three primary criteria, and that is soils, water, and financial profile, right? So that farm has got to have uh, good soils that support the types of crops that want to be grown there, and, and preferably a, a myriad of different crops, so you have a, a multiple t uh, outcomes or potential, potential avenues to grow. It has to have absolutely stellar water, and, and that means both getting water onto the farm, A, having access to it, getting water onto the farm and then getting water off of the farm. It's incredibly important, especially in places like California, where that first piece of getting the water in the first place is really, really, really hard. And I, I can say 
with, with some excitement, all of our investments in California this year are receiving all of their water at or under the budgeted uh, dollar amount, despite the drought. So it is something we take very, very seriously. And, and as a result uh, of, of that water thing alone, we say no to the extreme, extreme majority of farms that come to our platform. And the number three is financial profile. It has to fit within the box. It has to provide good returns and has to provide good appreciation potential. So you can buy a farm that's got a great cap rate or great financial returns on paper, uh, but it may not be able to appreciate well. And, and, and the inverse is true also. And, and so we are, we've got a team of folks dedicated. There's six, soon to be nine on that team. That's, that's their focus is, is finding and doing the diligence on farms to make sure that they fit the, the very strict underwriting criteria. Or, or I should say diligence criteria to, to be on our platform. Then there is the, the finding those farms in the supply side. You know, I, I think probably rightfully so, upon first view, a lot of farmers will see our company and go, oh, this is just another, another fund or another new money person come into town. And we're not sure if we support that or not. We, we understand that a huge portion of our team are farmers. I mean, we have accredited farm manager on staff who, uh, you know, have mud and boots in our office every day. We're, we're in Arkansas. And, and so I think when, when we're able to have a conversation with a farmer, almost every single time that conversation turns out really, really favorably for a simple reason that we approach this and it has to be a partnership with farmers. The, the place where we find the most land to purchase is from farmers, not, not from land sellers, not from brokers, but farmers speak to us and say, hey, the farmer already owns a tractor. They say they've got equipment, combine, they're buying seed. There's economies of scale in this business. And, and many or most of them want to grow their, their operation. And, and when they see us appropriately as a capital partner to help grow, then, it, then it's a, a really great mutual outcome where we have that farmer helping to look for, for land for us. And, uh, and they may show up a month later, maybe two years later and say, hey, I know of a, of a friend who's retiring. I'd love to farm that acreage. It's contiguous to what I'm working on. Would you guys serve as a capital partner? And again, if that fits the criteria, uh, then we'll move forward with that. And, and so ultimately, I, I would be proud to say that every farmer we work with views us as a, as a partner. We're in touch with them. We're in communication with them. And, and we work with them. We make investments in the land. We very often raise extra capital up front to go do things like install drainage tile, clean up ditches, fix roads, uh, improve irrigation. So we, we absolutely want to make that farmer's life easier in every way we can. Great, thank you. Russell Morgan asks, are you seeing interest in your platform from professional farm managers slash professional farm management firms who typically, who typically operate at least to some degree in the real estate broker space or wouldn't this platform be viewed as, as competition? We, we could be viewed as competition, but the ones we know understand that we're not. And, and that's fairly simple. A, a, we work with, so for, first to set the, the ground here, we have external farm managers. So we actually work with and are customers of many of these farm managers throughout the country. In, in each region or each state or even, even sub-region, we'll have specific managers that uh, we have business relationships with and we enjoy working with. And we pay them to, to or the investors pay to, through, through us to have them manage those farms on their behalf. So the farm managers see us as a, as a repeat buyer and a source of growth. So, so we absolutely work with farm managers throughout. The same is true with, with brokers, where we, with, with the right brokers that present the right information or in the right areas, we, we can be a, a repeat customer of, their, of theirs as well. And so again, it, it turns out to be a, a great relationship. So we, we work actively with hundreds of, of managers and brokers and agents throughout the country. Great. Great. Another question I had, Carter, was just around kind of what sort of the next 12 to 18 months look like for you in terms of growth, any new kind of features, just look, looking for kind of your perspective on, on biggest growth opportunities. A few of the things, features first, and then we'll, we'll discuss growth in, at large. Uh, a few additional features we're rolling out. Certainly, we continue to always iterate on our core software platform to provide more uh, functionality and value to investors and farmers both. Beyond that, then, operational features is we are 
gathering more and more licenses in more and more states to conduct these whole farm transactions where there is a, a broker involved to, to allow one seller and one buyer uh, versus what you see on the website of one seller and many buyers. In addition to that is, is we do plan on rolling out a lot of our data analytics and, and mapping software to the general public and, and giving that away. Uh, so we, we, there's a lot of that on our website today for, for exploration tools, for data about states, commodities, returns, rents, things like that in, inside of various states throughout the US. But we wanna do much, much more. And so you, you'll see us continue to uh, roll out large iterations and improvements on, on that product. Again, with the simple idea of transparency, bringing more, more data and, and information to to market. Beyond that, as we think about growth as a business, it, it is um, daunting uh, the, the number of opportunities within this industry. And, and frankly, it's a, it can, can be a huge distraction. So we maintain our focus on conducting efficient and, and seamless transactions for the, for the parties we are involved with. And, and we, have, we have our beacon, which, which is that, and we have our bounds around that to make sure that we as a company and, and as a culture remain focused on providing those those positive outcomes for, for our various constituents. That's a long-winded way to say we're growing like crazy, but we also want to grow very responsibly. We are dealing with people's capital and we're dealing with their land and their farming operations. These are very, very important things. The margin for error is nil. And oh yeah, by the way, we are also, we have regulators. So, so we absolutely are super focused on growing the right way. We have two attorneys in, in house and other four external uh, firms we work with uh, to, to make sure that we are always ultra compliant and, and growing very responsibly. Uh, maybe to perhaps further highlight that, Tom, is if you look on our website right now, and frankly, most of the time, there's not a lot of the offerings we put up or subscribe pretty quickly, and we do about one a week. But again, most of the time, our site does not have a, a live active way to invest. You have to sign up and we notify you when those investments are coming. Could we have more investments on the site? Absolutely. Uh, can we put more farms up? Absolutely, but we have truly rigorous standards, and, and we want to make we want to uh, continue to adhere to those, and, and we do that very often at the sake of revenue growth. So we could be growing at a dramatically faster clip than we are today, but we we refuse to do so because we want to make sure we're doing the right thing by our partners, be both the farmers as as well as the investors on the platform. Great. What do you see? So to that end, what do you see as the biggest risk factors over the next couple of years, two to five years, perhaps? What what sort of keeps you up at night? Obviously, you're you're moving responsibly and and slowly, at least you know, covering all your bases. What keeps you up at night? What are the biggest risks as you see them? To to us, the biggest risk is our reputation. Right. Again, I mentioned a moment ago, we're dealing with people's livelihoods, whether that be their, their money uh, or their land or their farming operation. And, and so our reputation is all that matters. So, so doing the right thing every time, acting in the interest of, of our customers is, is incredibly important. And so we, I mentioned our, our hiring and our culture earlier, but both myself, our COO and our full-time recruiter we have here on staff, uh, we, we are staunch defenders of culture. Because if, you, if, we, if we make a bad hire, if we have a bad person out there in the field acting on our behalf or sharing a business card with us, that is a huge, huge risk that we take. And so we are, we are incredibly cautious about making sure to surround ourselves with, with people that are, that are intelligent, they work hard, they're curious and they're creative, but most importantly, they are good humans and they, they have good character. Terrific. An anonymous attendee asks the, I think the last question we have so far, is there a set management fee or does it vary per investment? It varies a little bit. It is usually 75 basis points. So 0.75% of the ad is, is charged as a management fee each year by, by our management company. And then in, in some cases that, that we may charge a marginally higher management fee for, for more complex situations, but, but it's pretty straightforward. Our goal is like, we know well, and a lot of us have spent our careers in investing. The, the future is low fee. And, and volume based, we feel the same way. We, we want to provide uh, low fee outcomes for the investors. And that's uh, certainly, we, we have the lowest fees in the industry, just about any way that you want to invest in farmland. Unless again, you want to go buy a whole farm. That's a, that's a different equation, but uh, we're, we're very proud to offer the, the fee structure that we do. And, and I should stay up, stay further. Uh, the way that we are, are compensated more so 
is, is by acting as a, a real estate broker. And so we, we view that as a great way to earn a living as a business. Those real estate brokerage fees are involved in transactions no, mu- no matter what in, in most cases. And so we would rather be involved somewhere where you're paying someone anyway, rather than creating new fees on top. Great. Well, Carter, this has been great. To end it, what can the audience help you out with here and, and how can they find you? you always find us at Acre Trader. We would love for anyone to sign up for an account. And what we really love is we're, we're ultra transparent internally with each other. We really love it when people give us feedback. Like nice feedback is great, right? You like the product, you're an investor. That is fantastic. We, we'd love to speak with you. Uh, but we really love hearing, hey, here's something that I believe you could do better. Here are some ways I believe you could improve. Or just even if it's all right, here's the things that I see that I don't like. That's very useful feedback for us to hear. And so we, we really appreciate when we receive that. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Carter, for joining us today. Congratulations on all your progress. I'd also like to thank the audience for their active participation. We do host these conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. So if you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. Uh, and new viewers can register for, for upcoming conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. If you'd like to learn more, um, join us next week when we host Grow Guru, an exciting company with a sustainable irrigation management solution that boosts yield and saves water, as July's theme is water management. So we hope to see you sometime in July for some cool companies we'll have on Agri-Food Conversations. So again, thank you all for your time. Carter, thanks again. Tom, th- thanks to you and iSelect and Van Trump and Yield Lab and Family Farms. It's, it's been great. I appreciate the conversation today. Likewise. We'll see you soon.